Hello, everyone. Today we are being joined by Rob Laffin. And it is Antonio and myself because Neil is on holiday today. So, and I'm joining from a beautiful day in Virginia and out on my screen and porch. And Rob and Antonio both joining us from Ireland. Irish day today. So, Rob, welcome to the program. Thank you. Uh, nice to be here. Great to talk. Yeah, and I'm partial to Irish accents. I just think they're the best. So uh, I don't know. Antonio's Irish accent it sounds Portuguese to me, but I don't know. Just me, I guess. Uh, <laughs> but Rob, welcome to the program. Do you mind? I know today that we're going to talk about our topic is the importance of social inclusion. Yes. And you are like me. You're a parent of a child that has uh, disabilities. Uh, your son has autism. My daughter. And so, your daughter, excuse yeah. me. And do, so do you mind, you know, telling, you know, our viewers more about who you are and Tippy Talk and, you know, how how we got right here where we are? Sure. No problem. I'd love to. Um, so firstly, my, my name is Rob Laffin and um, I'm based here in uh, Limerick City in Ireland, about, uh, about 60 miles from Antonio at the minute in time. Uh, same time zone, so that's always good. And um, I have a six-year-old little girl called Sadie who was diagnosed with autism um, back in 2013. Um, so that was my, my first, uh, uh, I suppose, step into the world of, of people with disabilities. I was probably like your average person who would be out there where disabilities had never really touched their life in any way, shape or form. About, <laughs> about a year into, a year after my, my, my daughter was born, we started to notice that little subtle irregularities that, that, that weren't really uh, consistent with your, your neurotypical child, I suppose, and an alarm bell started ringing. So uh, that was my, my introduction to the world of, of, of uh, uh, living with a, a child with, with a disability. So um, the whole birth of Tippy Talk, I suppose, really came in around uh, uh, Sadie's uh, uh, diagnosis. Um, she was born in 2010. And a couple of days after she was born, I'd actually lost my job. Uh, the Irish economy took a, a downturn and there was no jobs in the country, nothing. So um, I spent the best part of about two years uh, unemployed and searching for jobs everywhere, couldn't find them. So the next logical step was to, uh, to see where the jobs were and go and hunt out some sort of education or something to get one of those jobs. And everything in my hometown in Limerick pointed towards engineering. Uh, we had a lot of multinationals that were coming to the country setting up, uh, a lot of big name companies were setting up here, and they were all looking for uh, skilled people. We called in 2012 that I was going to go back to college and get skilled in this area in order to get a job, to pay my mortgage, and to, to put food on the table and just do my, 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 my duties as, as, as a parent, as a father. So, um, um, Sadie kind of got her, her we, we kind of knew something was up around the same time I went back to college and everything pointed towards autism. So even before we got to di the diagnosis, we knew that um, it was autism that we were facing here. Like, you know, so uh, I made a conscious decision there and then that um, I would do something in college with the technology that I was being taught to help Sadie. And it was just Sadie I was focused on because uh, as the, the, the professionals had said to me um, at the time when we were going to see them to see what we could do, they told me that I was the expert in my child's autism, and I fully believe that today. Yeah. So if I was the expert in my child's autism, why don't I use the knowledge and the skills that I've acquired to create something that would uh, help me to get the best out of, out of Sadie's situation and our situation? So that led to the, the birth of, of Tippy Talk. Back then, 2013, I had no idea what it was going to be. But um, at the end of 2014, I was, I suppose, I was in my third year in college at that stage. And um, the idea actually came from, from, from Sadie herself. Uh, I was standing at the back door late one night, as you know, kids with autism, they, they don't really like to, to, to sleep much. <laughs> um, so, um, uh, my phone, uh, a little notification was off my phone. My Sadie handed me the phone, and I said, "What's what's up? What's up, honey? You're trying to give Daddy a message?" And the penny dropped. So the technology I was studying at the time, the link with Tippy Talk, 
and lo and behold, uh, the picture to text communication system uh, bubble just started going off in my head. Which is exciting. It's amazing mm. what we can learn from our children. And Sadie obviously has a lot to say. Maybe she's going to speak in a non-traditional way, but I have no doubt that Sadie, um, she's your daughter for a reason. I know that Antonio wanted to make a comment, so I'm going to pass the mic over to Antonio. No, uh, no it's, it's, it's always nice when, when we connect the dots uh, within Ireland. So it's not, no, it's, it's one of, it's the first time that we we have the, the opportunity to do this and to be two from this side of the Atlantic and have Deborah on that side. So I'm really happy to have you today uh, with us, Rob. Uh, in, in 2011, I have one of my colleagues at work uh, who was struggling with the, with the, with this uh, kid. He was three years old uh, and they were trying to identify something. They, were, they didn't know what it was in relation to his behavior. And he, he was then diagnosed with autism. And he had to uh, ask uh, for support and he ended up in Spain in a two weeks therapy that completely changed his life. So basically those two weeks with the therapist in Spain uh, was able to open a completely new world for him. Uh, and then uh, after that period, he was also advised to uh, have a dog in order to be able to support him in terms of communication uh, with this kid. Uh, but something that he was already noticing for quite some time is uh, his kid was always playing with this technology. You know, playing with his phone, playing with, with, with his camera. And my colleague was really stressed and he was finding very difficult to find support anywhere uh, around him. So uh, what I would like to ask is when you, when you started to develop that, that um, uh, tippy talk and you started to get, you know, trying to find ways to, to help your, your girls to communicate. What type of reaction uh, and feedback were you able to get from other parents? Well, at the time, Antonio, um, as I said at the very start, uh, uh, my goal was to help Sadie and Sadie only. And um, so I had noticed how proficient she was using uh, an iPad and even the TV screen at home to see her uh, trying to chase figures around the TV and whatever and the whole app, like, you know would pretty much readily engage with um with a touchscreen device. Um so that kind of led me on to, to to down the path of um saying, okay, she's already kind of using the PEX imagery uh, symbols for communication and she was pretty good at that. Um she had sensory processing disorder as well. So um there was a lot of stimming and chewing and ripping of the cards, whatever like you know so kind of the technology was an incorporation of of that and uh, her PEX communication system with both. So <clears throat> when it started working with Sadie, I, of course, was thrilled. I'd connected with my daughter. She was sending out meaningful communication to us. And um, it goes back to the first message I ever got from her. Uh, it was from a fast food outlet. I was at the other side of the city. Uh, Daddy wants some chicken nuggets. So something came over me that day that um, I, I still can't put any words on it, but it was, it was, it was a moment of clarity, really, like, you know. I said, okay, I'm after finding something here that'll help me connect with my child. And now I need to see if I can do this, repeat this with other people who might be in a similar situation to me. And um, I introduced the Tippy Talk system, the original one, big box, to a couple of other uh, uh, people who were in Sadie's position in my, my local area, my local town. And uh, the results were starting to show signs of success. Not all were successful, but some were successful. So in that then, it was a case of how do you, how do I deliver the exact same system, the exact same communication method as I created for Sadie at the lowest possible cost in order to keep it alive and functioning. So uh, from the get-go, uh, it showed positive signs, but like I said, it, it peaked and then dropped a little and it peaked and dropped a little, but slowly it's getting out there and moving again. Like, you know, so I hope that answered you. Deborah, you want to comment, please? Yes, yes, you know, it, it's, as also as a parent that um, my daughter and my son as well changed my life and the direction of my life. You know, I, whenever the doctors told us that Sarah was born with trisomy 21, commonly known as Down syndrome, it, I, I remember digesting the information uh, when she was four months old and thinking, okay, this is my life's path how do I add value? 
here and 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 it took me a while to figure it out but uh, i want to back up just a step and, and uh, i know the answer to this question and yet i'm going to ask it again so that you can let our viewers know so i think that what we can um properly say is that your daughter is she um doesn't have traditional communication skills is it correct no she's nonverbal. is that it could could i use that terminology you could, Deborah, to a certain extent. Um, I'm very, very lucky lately because um, Sadie is actually uh, starting to verbalize for us. And this has only occurred over oh, the yeah. last four to six months. Um, she has approximately 15 words now that she'd use intermittently. Excellent. But the foundation has been set and it's a case of we focus as a family unit now, we focus more on Sadie's speech and language pathology in order to extend that vocabulary as much as we possibly can. But tippy talk, jumps in underneath there because it has actually created a little platform unbeknown to me that has now helped Sadie to be more socially included even in the family unit. All right. So that's where the whole social inclusion thing is kind of coming from now. Um, Sadie is able to text her grandma, her grandpa, her uncles, aunts, cousins, all the people that are in her social network that's on her TV talk. Even if they're away from the home, if they're in different countries, if they're in different towns, cities, she can easily pick up her tippy talk and say, hi, grandma, how are you? And send a text message that way. So now she's, so I, she's expanded sorry. beyond, beyond this, the, the, the home itself and is able to, to reach out much further, like, you know. So remind us, how old is Sadie today? Uh, she's six. She'll be seven in September. So. Okay. All right. Now, I, I know that I read a um, story um, on the day that, uh, or the day after that Steve Jobs had died. And it was um, a story that will stay with me forever. And the um, man was a very well-known writer in the United States, a reporter. And he said, Steve Jobs is hard for all of society because of what he was able to contribute, despite you know obstacles Steve Jobs had himself. But he said, what he doesn't realize is that the iPad that he created, so this was, you know, obviously years ago, it is allowing me to have to communicate with my three-year-old child that is nonverbal. And he and he was using the example of the iPad and some apps, but it was just such a powerful, powerful story. And I think the thing that it compelled me so much about your story, Rob, is that you have a reason your daughter is teaching you you're learning your whole family's learning you went back you became an engineer you're very involved in social engagement you also have experience in robotics so you're doing what we talk about a lot on access chat is how do we take this amazing technology out there apply it to in a family and society and how do we really make sure that sadie and all of the say other sadies and you know people and i'll give you another example my chief accessibility officer rosemary musashio rosemary was born with cerebral palsy but rosemary is nonverbal, and so she also uses different um technologies so that she can communicate in a more traditional uh way um so i i think it's a very powerful story that's unfolding so is tippy talk an application yeah, at this minute, at this minute in time, Tippy Talk is an application. Um, I have to kind of say, from the onset, the the, the Tippy Talk that I created was originally created on uh, industrial automation hardware. So, um, touchscreen systems that I that I used to build it and program it were initially intended for um, uh, the likes of uh, assembly lines in manufacturing facilities. So, I just took hardware and re reprogrammed it and done it for a, a completely different uh, application. What it was for. So the cost of the, the hardware around creating a device as such was huge. You're, you're looking at over $5,000 per device. Oh, yeah. And yes. the ease and access and capability of changing uh, any kind of a, uh, imagery layout within the system was very, very difficult. You'd actually need a trained professional in order to change just uh, simple uh, little pictures on the program to, to translate into a text. So the next logical step, of course, was we need to make an app version of this to make it readily available for people just to go in and download with ease onto the iPad. I, I tell a story about a 15 year old girl with Down syndrome that was having um, communications problems. And so the speech therapist here in the United States had suggested 
that she get a communications board. And I don't know what brand it was, but it was three feet long and it had a vocabulary of, I think, up to 300 words. And the young lady with Down syndrome said, well, the young girl, I guess she's 15, said, well, why wouldn't I just get an iPad with different apps to support my communications? And she did all the research and sent it to the speech pathologist. And they're like, I guess we could do it that way. It's much, much more efficient. It's $300. Everybody's using this. Why wouldn't we do it this way? So interesting that you walk some of the same paths. But what does this mean for communication? Because I think it, it, it supports people like Sadie and Rosemary and others that are not communicating in the traditional way. But what could this mean for society, for social inclusion overall? Well, I from I, I kind of I do believe that that we're we're going down the road where, where technology is advancing so fast. Every every week you see new advancements in technology and it's going on. And within the last ten years, since the birth of touchscreen communication with phones and and, and tablets, etc., you can see it when you walk down the street. You can see you can see the gang of teenage girls standing at the corner with all their heads and their phones, and they're probably all talking to each other. Right. So right. it's. It's totally socially ac acceptable these days to walk around uh, being wired into the voice, looking at a screen. Nobody really passes uh, too much attention to it. Like, you know, if you look back 10 years ago, people would call you rude. And um, I was in Dallas Airport last week in Washington and um, I saw a smoking area inside in the gates, which I haven't seen in years in, in an airport, especially like, you know, and smoking <laughs> is it's socially unacceptable now. So when I was outside the airport smoking room, uh, people were looking at me walking in, and that was socially unacceptable that I was going in. But when I was sitting down inside, I was just smoking a cigarette. Everyone around me was on their phones, and that was acceptable to do that inside, even though I was doing something that was socially unacceptable. So, oh, so fast! It's come, it's come along. It's come a long way, like you know. And and even still to this day, I I, I look around me. I'm constantly looking at people, and 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 trying to study more about people, and learn about people as 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 I move on through this, this technology journey as well. So I learn lots from everyone that's around me, and I learn so, so much from Sadie and from other people just like Sadie, especially when they're engaging with Tippy Talk as well. And um, the feedback I get from parents from using the product that are saying like, you know, uh, my son has, has told me for the first time he wanted to drink of water, which in, in, in households like mine is huge. It's, it is huge. It's a triumphant moment. It's absolutely huge. Uh, like the chicken nugget story for me, that was, that, that was, that was, I was bawling and crying. Like, you know, to me, that was my daughter's first words, like, you know, but I suppose as we go through time, um, the more, like I was saying, the more and more technology advances, the more and more we, 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 we just adapt to it and accept to it. Like, you know, and um, there's nothing more I love at the end of the day's work than to sit down and just go on social media and just check out what my friends are doing, just say hi and check in. And that's, that's, that's perfectly acceptable as well. So, uh, so uh, how, how do you see uh, you no know, the uh, TP Talk and the app that you developed to be able to follow up your daughter's journey to the education system? Okay, uh, that's a great question, Antonio. Um, we're currently at this minute in time, I'd say we're approximately about 60, 70 percent through the development of version two of TP Talk. So uh, version one was basically um, to get it out there and see does this product work. Does this product do what it says? Does what it says. And thankfully, most of the time it does. It's not for everyone, and that's fine. But the best communication tool for anyone that needs it is the one that works. And I fully believe in that. If Tippy Talk is the one that works for you, great. If it's not, there's lots more of the ones out there. Don't give up and keep going. So uh, back to version two. Um, version two will incorporate a two way communication system. So uh, the parent or the teacher or the therapist we now be able to text back to the individual who's using the, the Tippy Talk device. Um, so it's very exciting what's coming along. Uh, you've got four options of communicating back with the, the, the nonverbal individual. Um, you can send back pictures, you can send back audio files, texts, emojis, and it's all kind of, it's, it's all pushed into a real sim simplified way that the individual who's using the device, Tippy Talk, it's pretty easy for them to understand. Um, on the back end of that, we are doing a data analytics kind of thing, which we uh, will only give access to the professionals or the parents. So they can come, they'll be able to come along and log in on the, on the 
Tippy Talk web portal. It's kept secure and safe. And um, they will be actually able to see the communication that has been sent from their loved one or their, their client to their social network on a 24 hour, seven day a week. So inside that, that, that information that's been transmitted, especially in the school setting, we can now uh, have a look into, uh, uh, to see if there's, if there's anything that, that triggers kind of a, a communication that would say that there's an issue here. So if I just give you an example, um, if, a, if a teacher is faced with a challenging behavior from a certain non-verbal uh, student on a Tuesday, they can go back into the web portal and see the messages that were sent on the Monday and the Sunday and the Saturday. Did that non-verbal individual send a message on the Saturday saying they had a tooth deck? And now the teacher is faced with this challenging behavior on a Tuesday because of the, of the person's uh, communication of a tooth deck. The last thing we want to do is to see our non-verbal loved ones and, and clients and, 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 and children and all that. Uh, being put into uh, police cars because of two decks. And you see that happening an awful lot. Yeah. It's the simple foundation of, of communication. Can we communicate out what's, what's happening there and just resolve it? And, and the consequences to the behaviours, we, we need to, to, to lessen them out and make them as easy as possible. So um, Tippy Talk 2 is, is kind of good in that sense. And um, also it's kind of being pushed more towards uh, uh, in-classroom communication system from teacher to student, student to special needs assistant, and just kind of keep that, that communication network within the school system then as well, while also allowing uh, uh, the, the, the parents and whoever needs uh, that access to that information as well. Uh, uh, just a, a, few, a few weeks ago, we received that from a video from Sesame Street, where they were able to, do, they have a character with autism, they, they were able to create a sort of a, a very interesting narrative about uh, that character and the relationship with their friends. Uh, uh, do you see a, a Stippy Talk as also a way to help your daughter to extend their social relations with their friends? Absolutely, Antonio. And uh, Julia is a character, and I, I had the pleasure of meeting Julia on her first uh, uh, introduction to the public at the Autism Society of America's uh, conference in New Orleans. It was, uh, it was great to meet her. Um, I do, um, like I was saying, um, I'm talking from my personal experience with Sadie and for her to be able to text grandma and grandpa and uh, her uncles and aunts and cousins is a great thing. Um, as she grows older, no doubt we will be able to add friends into the mix on this and that's, that's the ultimate, ultimate goal of Tippy Talk is to create a network whereby we can have our non-verbal loved ones have friends. And having friends, in my opinion, is one of the, the, the greatest gifts you, you can get in life itself. So we, we all love our friends, and we all pick our friends. <laughs> right. It's the joys in our life. Absolutely. Absolutely. I, I'm going to um, ask you a question that uh, is a, a, an obvious question. I mean, but it, I, I just want to dig into it a little bit more, so I'll stop setting up the question. So. Why is it important for us to make sure that people that are nonverbal can communicate? Okay, um, you probably agree with me on this one, Deborah. But <laughs> I'm I'm at the stage in my life now, and especially with Sadie, it's at six as well, that I'm a parent of a child with a profound disability, and I am afraid to die. I want I, I want to be in the position where I need to outlive my child, and no parent should have to say that, really. You know. No parent should have to bury their child, but being a parent of a child with autism, that's the way we look at it. So communication is, for, for us, is the bedrock of, of setting up Sadie's life in the future going forward, when I'm long gone, that everything's going to be okay, that she has that network of friends that she can trust, that I can trust, and I know that when I'm gone, everything's going to be okay. Because at this minute in time, I don't know that. And it's an uncertainty that thousands and thousands of parents just like me have all across the world out there. I agree. A lot and of people are afraid, a lot of people are afraid to, 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 to say something about it, but it's the truth. It's the absolute truth. It and is. that's the position me and my wife are in. We have discussions uh, here at, at nighttime when, when Sadie's gone to bed and stuff, like uh, trying to plan how do we outlive her, like, you know, and, and we could, so 
<laughs> are we going to go on this fitness regime? Are we going to kick smoking? Of course, is the big one. Uh, got to do that. Cut down on sugar. All these crazy things. <laughs> That's right. No smoking. No sugar. I know. Yeah. You know, it, it's it's interesting. And in as a parent, uh, Cirrus of uh, thirty now, and a, I'm walking um, a very interesting path with her. Really, the last year and a half because Sarah communicates but sometimes the way Sarah communicates with me she she tells me stories and I have to take that story and I have to try to figure out what she meant by the story like the example you gave of you know somebody had a toothache right and so Sarah will say to me things sometimes like for example and Sarah in some ways she's very high functioning and then other ways you know she you know she has a disability i get that but the, and i'll give you an example she came to me a couple of months ago and she's like her mother we could all, both lose some weight but she came to me and she she patted her stomach and she said i think i might be pregnant mom <laughs> and i was like no no, I, I don't think you're pregnant. But as we went into it, she started telling me this real lavish story, um, very detailed and everything else about, you know, the pregnancy. I finally figured out that she had a really bad stomach ache and it, she was having real bad gas pains and, and they were very painful. And the best way she could relate to me was ex she sort of tied it to, well, I guess I'm pregnant, even though she didn't do the different things you have to do to get pregnant. But so sometimes, and, and I'll tell you, some of her autistic friends will say to me, why is Sarah lying about this? And it's to help them understand that she isn't doing, it's not black and white. Communication is not black and white. She's, she's trying to tell you something like right now, I think Sarah to move out of, you know, she wants to live on her own. But she tells us in these real lavish ways. So it's interesting with communications because it can be someone like Sadie that was non-communicative, communicate nonverbal, and now she has a small vocabulary. But stand, um, I, I I feel like my daughter must be very very smart young lady to be able to work hard enough and long enough with me and my husband and her friends. Um, and her support system to help us understand what she's trying to tell us because sometimes it comes with some very interesting communication styles. Absolutely, yeah, absolutely. Uh, uh, something that we have that we have observed and and based in what you are, in what you are telling us, Rob, in, in relation to the fact that you you have built you have built something that might work for some kids that might work for others. It's it's important today because we have so much information around us. But it's, it's really important to understand that we cannot put uh, disability in a box. We cannot put autism in a box. Uh, and sometimes uh, it, it's important for parents to, to know that. Because sometimes we always want to fit things in, in one. And it's important to, to, to clarify that they need to find their own pattern. They need to, to know what works for their kid. And, and it, I, it's a real challenge considering, you know, once more, all the information that we have uh, uh, around us. So your journey, you know, with your wife about, you know, we need to find to to get fit and extend and, and life, yeah. you know, reveals uh, reveals that. So it's it's very interesting that we we are able to have this this conversation, and uh, because it's a, it's a real challenge. And like Deborah was was saying in in relation to Sarah, she needs to have a very good knowledge of herself in order to be able to be in the position to translate and, and understand uh, her, her desire. So I think it's uh, the, act, uh, the act of communication is also a, an act of uh, uh, accessibility and an act of inclusion. So uh, thank you, Deborah, for sharing that story. Thank you. It, you know, it's, it's sometimes I, I struggle Shelley, sh sharing some of the stories because I know there are going to be people that will say, and it's not that I worry about being judged. Well, I guess, you know, but it's it's just so different. And um, it's it's a different way of living your life. And 
yeah, I, I know there's a story, um, and, and I'm going to forget the name of the book, but it was written by um, a young man with autism in Japan. I think he's about 13 to 11 to 13 years old, nonverbal. And his mother never really, she always knew he understood. And just like with Sarah, Sarah was nonverbal for many years, but I always knew she understood. I could tell by her response that she always understood but she couldn't always communicate with us and she had to be so patient with us, still has to be patient with us as we try to figure out what she's really saying because her words don't always reflect what she means. But I thought it was so interesting when this young man wrote this book because he really explained his world and it was much, much robust and much more beautiful and intricate and complicated than I think a lot of people around him ever realized. So I, I think people with autism and people with Down syndrome. Many people with Down syndrome also have autistic tendencies and there's quite a few people with Down syndrome that are also autistic. So the two communities touch each other a lot, but the products as the child does start becoming, um, you know, moving into, you know, teenage years and adult years and things like that, because I know a lot of them that are older are going to not want everybody to have access to everything they said on social media. So you, you get a little bit more complicated. And I don't know, you're still, Sadie's still at that precious six years old age. So maybe you haven't gone down that path yet, but I'm, I was just curious if that had come up. No, we, we haven't gone down that path yet. And it's something I was conscious of as well. And just, just like the, the whole birth of Tippy Talk and, and, and the journey I've started on, it's, it's kind of come along with my experience as I go through life and as Sadie grows and develops as well. And uh, right. I'm lucky in the sense that because I'm now connected with so many more individuals across the world, all Tippy Talk related, I learn so much more from, from these individuals then as well. I'll give you an example. Right. We've got one Tippy Talk user and he's, he lives in the UK and uh, won't, won't say the names now or anything, but um, this guy is 22 years old now and he's, he's non-verbal. He'll never verbalize. Okay. And he's a true champion of, of Tippy Talk. So what I've learned from this guy is amazing, like, you know, and I'll just give you an example. You've got his dad and his mom who's in his social network. To his mom, he communicates his feelings, how he feels, if he's happy or if he's sad, if, you know, if I just want to cry or whatever, he'll communicate all that, that, that nice stuff to his mom. To his dad, he gives orders and instructions. I want chips and mushy peas for my dinner. I want to go to the cinema. Let's go see the soccer. So it's all kind of, you can see the dynamic of, of how he interacts with his family because he uses Tippy Talk as his communication method. Mommy wow. gets all the loves and hugs and cuddles, but daddy is the doer. Daddy gets, gets the dinner and brings him to football and has all the fun times. That, like, you know, so again, I just see so many different things happening with so many different users that are out there. And um, like, like you said, I, I'm in the lovely phase now at the minute. And then... Um, like, I can communicate with Sadie using Tippy Talk, but not all the time. Not all the time. We do we do get into meltdown zone mode sometime, and that's mm -hmm. fine. That's, that's life. autism. And <laughs> go back to what the therapist said to me then as well. Like, you know, allow for the autism as well. Allow for things to happen because that's the way they need to happen then as well. But um, wow. lo luckily in the sense that um, not all communication is verbal as well. So communication happens with the as well and watching your loved one just watching them going around you can learn so much from, from their body movements how they are with you and and everything else around like you know tippy talk is just kind of the icing on the cake that'll allow for that instant communication so you, it's, um i know that antonio has a question so i'm going to turn it over to him but i just want to make a comment first you know it's fascinating by what you just used for the example that was 22 so he talks one way to his mom he talks another way to his dad which everyone has a different relationship with every single person in their life but one thing that i've always i, I haven't figured it out and i don't think we figured it out as a society but to assume that because a person is born with autism or Down syndrome or cerebral palsy or anything else that they don't have so much value to add to the world, I think is a mistake. I talk about that a lot on human potential at work. But I think what we can actually learn from these individuals that are coming into the world, that are already here in the world, that have autism, that have Down syndrome, that 
see the world differently and communicate differently, I, I think there are powerful, powerful things that society can learn, including the example you just made with the 22-year-old man, the way he talks to his mother versus his father, which, by the way, is, is very common. And I think sometimes that if we could really, as society, really try to understand what these people with autism as adults and children and, and other types of disabilities are communicating evolve as human beings. I know I'm getting into really esoteric stuff. But I'm I'm to yeah, I yeah, I really, really believe it's that. Nature. And um it's it's back to then you know, uh, for me, um I was lucky in the sense that uh, I had a good wife behind my shoulders and she kicked my butt because um I started going down the road of kind of feeling a little bit sorry for myself when, when, when Sadie was diagnosed and whatever and the whole lot. And then um, had my 24 hours of, of, of kind of, oh no, what's going to happen kind of thing. But for me, it was the acceptance of my daughter's disability that really, really helped me change my perspective on how I look at the world around me and how she must look at the world around her then as well. Like, you know, so uh, we have way, to walk that path. In a way I, I look, yeah. In a way, I look at autism as a, as a gift, really, not so much as, as, as a burden as you can make it out to be. And tippy talk was all about me uh, kind of I suppose uh, making an adversity into an opportunity as right. well an opportunity right. for for me for my daughter and for the thousands of other people out there that's that's that tippy talk can help I agree Antonio no uh, we have a few a few uh, f friends working for uh, at the BBC uh, who are uh, autistic and they they work in the area of research that they have done a few events where they organize job events for people with disabilities where they can go and and be interviewed by some people from human resources at the bbc in a in a different kind of environment and we also know that the airport in limerick has a space for kids That's correct, uh, Antonio, yeah. yeah for kids with nothing so but uh, my question is more about what deborah was talking about is how can you help your daughter to identify her own abilities? How can you help her in, into that? Or how can you, how can she, uh, or, is, or it's the opposite. Is she actually teaching you that to yourself? Well, in my, in my opinion, I learn from Sadie every day. And the whole, the whole, the whole thing behind Tippy Talk was of me watching her and me learning from her. So it was how she engaged with the world, how, she, how, how everything revolved around what she was doing and how she reacted to it. So um, like I said, she's young yet. She's got a few little words and every day I learn, learn more and more and more like, you know, and I'm glad you mentioned Shannon Airport as well. Um, they have a fabulous little sensory room out there as well. It's fantastic. And uh, we're actually, we, we've actually uh, offered a uh, Shannon Airport uh, as many tippy talks as they like to put around the airport as well. So hopefully they'll, they'll take us up on that and uh, we'll be able to get some communication going out in the airport. But you know, it's interesting is that, you know, that's not just for people with autism. I travel all the time and there are many times when I'm totally on sensory overload and I could just really, I, I was talking to my brother-in-law yesterday who just got hearing aids and he says there's a seven different programs and one is Zen where all of a sudden you can do Zen and everything gets calm and I think, wow, I need that sometimes. So yeah. <laughs> I, once again, what we're learning from people with autism, and, and I agree with what you said, Rob, it, not deciding that your daughter's life is a tragedy because she has autism, but what does she have to teach you and your wife and everyone else? You know, I, I, I think we need to be more in awe that are born or have autism. I, I really think we need to be in awe and say, okay, so she's making me think very differently than the way I'm thinking, just like Sarah. Sarah be a great teacher to me she's a great teacher and by the way we learn from good and bad right so or opportunities I guess it's not always good and bad but I feel society trying to evolve to the next level and I think people like Sadie are really going to you know make make a big difference in the world but Rob I know that we're um, we probably went over a little bit because this was such a fascinating conversation but before back. we sign off yeah tell 
sure that we put it on access chat too, but tell us what the URL is for uh, Tippy Talk. How, how would people find out more about it? Okay, it's just www.tippy.com. All right. And so, all the information is up there. Um, it's available in all app stores as well for immediate download. And it comes with a 30 day free trial as well. And I can't emphasize that enough. The reason I put it up there as a 30 day free trial was to see if it would make, if, if it made a difference in your loved one's life. And that 30 okay. days gave you the opportunity to see if it did before any costs were involved. So it well, I was adamant that I went out there. It was a try before you buy because I was in the position where I've spent hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of euros and dollars on, on apps and stuff. And sometimes they didn't work out. And that's not because of the app, it's just because it wasn't a communication tool that was uh, for Sadie. Right, but right. now we're using Tippy Talk, so all is good. Well, we want you to be wildly, wildly successful. And we want Sadie to continue to tell the world what she needs and what value she can add. And we're really honored to have you on the program, Rob. Oh, so I'm um, looking forward looking forward to the tweet chat tomorrow. So we're going to go ahead and say goodbye. Thank you, Antonio and Rob, for joining me today. And you, I Ella. look forward. Yeah. And I love the access chat t-shirt, Antonio. Okay. You're going to have to okay. put it for self for all of us. <laughs> That's so cool. Oh, gosh. I noticed that. So, okay. Bye, okay. everyone. Okay. Bye. Take care. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.